Welcome to the Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to the Weekly Option. This is episode 77 on August 30th, 2019. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we will cover the trades from last week on Slack Technologies, Citigroup, and Cisco Systems, and we discuss three new trades on Lannet Company, Inc., the S&P Oil & Gas Exploration and Production ETF, and Square, Inc. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here or about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a short video series to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. Now, we saw a nice week over week gain in the U.S. equity markets this week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 774 points, ending the week at 26,403 points. The S&P 500 index gained 79 points, closing the week at 2,926 points. These are the highest weekly closes that we've seen in the month of August. So it's been about four weeks since we've seen the U.S. equity markets close on a high like this. It's a positive thing. Now, the topic of the week is sponsored by the Option Studio. If you want to learn to trade options without any calculus and confusing language, visit the website to learn more about the online course. Visit www.theoptionstudio.com for more information. Now, the topic of the week is actually our final segment this week. We're doing our final segment on complex trades. Uh, We've covered uh, iron condors, butterfly spreads, uh, straddles. Uh, It seems like we covered something else along with that. But today, we will discuss strangles. Strangles are kind of like straddles except the options are actually on different strikes. So if you remember, a straddle is comprised of a call and a put on the same strike in the same month, and you either buy or sell both options. Well, a strangle is made up of a call and a put in the same month, but this time on different strikes. Just like a straddle, you'll either buy both or sell both. So let's use some numbers as an example. With stock trading at $25 per share, you might decide to buy the 2428 strangle. That would be buying the September 24 put and buying the September 28 call. Now, typically, both options are out of the money, but that doesn't actually have to be the case. And because both options are out of the money most of the time, I tend to sell strangles more than I look to buy them. As you guys know on the show, I like to buy things that are already in the money and sell things that are out of the money. Now, this is considered a volatility trade because the price of the spread will move significantly with any changes in the underlying stock. So one of the benefits of selling the strangle is that you can create a large window of profit, meaning let's say you have a a $4 or $5 window between the two strikes. As long as stock finishes between or within that window, you actually keep the money that you collect for selling both the call and the put. Now, the riskiest part of the strangle is the fact that you have a naked call on the upside. You know that if you sell a naked put, because stock doesn't go, uh, we don't allow stock prices to go negative, that option, the naked put, actually has a capped downside. So in this case, if you were to sell the September 24 put, the most you could lose would be $24 per share. Each option is worth 100 shares, so it's $2,400. However, the naked call can, in theory, go up to infinity, and therefore you would be uh, you would be exposed on the upside. So if you understand options enough, you can actually use strangles to cap risk as well. It just takes a little bit more understanding of option payoffs and risk. And that's really the reason why I focus this show not on option Greeks, but really on option payoffs. If you can learn option payoffs, 
you'll learn to understand how to use options as a tool to make more money and to mitigate risk, mitigate losses. So remember, trading is all about managing risk. It's not about being able to time the market going up or time the market down. You can be wrong on most of your trades, but if you know how to manage that risk, you can still come out ahead. So the better you understand managing risk and option payoffs, the more likely you'll be able to find a way to make some money. And we're going to talk about that today with regards to the trade review because the market, uh, well, last week, let's see, we were, we, the market has run up um, over week over week and I ended up selling a call spread and buying a put spread. So you know that both of those trades are, are uh, trades that benefit when the market goes down. The market went up, so let's see uh, Let's see what just happened. So we'll start off with the covered call on Slack Technology, symbol W-O-R-K, work. Uh, last week, when we looked at the trade, the stock was trading for $30.05. We looked at buying stock and selling that September 31 call at $1.80, hoping for a maximum gain of 9.15% uh, return in four weeks. Well, Slack Technology stock fell $1.41 per share, ending the week at $28.64. The September 31 call we sold lost $0.25, cents, leading to a net loss of $1.16 per share on the trade. And that's due to the loss in the stock value. And then because we sold that call option, uh, having it go down in price means we can buy it back cheaper. Uh, so we make the $0.25 cents there. Now, if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that my first move is to see if I can still lock in a profit by rolling the strike lower. So we can buy in that September 31 call and sell the September 29 call at $2.20. This allows us to keep the $0.25 gain on that September 31 call option. And if stock finishes at $29 per share, we would actually lock in a $1.05 loss in the stock because we picked it up at $30.05. We would also get to keep that 25 cents per share. I'm sorry, the 25 cents uh, for the option. And we would also keep the $2.20 that we were selling this September 29 call for. So that would leave us with a net profit of $1.40, which is still a 4.65% return on our original investment. Now that's half of our original maximum gain of that we were looking at for four weeks, but that's still better than keeping a loss. Because we understand what to do with options, we're able to still finish up, uh, possibly finish up with a profit on a trade that went against us over the last week. So let's take a look at our credit spread. This is going to be the most uh, complex one. Um, this was on Citigroup, symbol C. Uh, the stock at the time was trading for $61.95. And we looked at the September 62, 62 half call spread sold that, I'm sorry, for 22 cents or at 22 cents, which leaves us with a maximum possible loss of 28 cents. Well, Citigroup shares closed the week at $64.35, which is a gain of $2.40 per share. The out of the money call spread we sold is, of course, now in the money. So you can actually buy the spread back for 42 cents per spread. Uh, which is a loss of 20 cents per spread. Now, given that our maximum loss on this trade was 28 cents at the start of the trade, we have already assumed 71% of our maximum loss. So we need to find a way to cover this loss. I don't like leaving it at a 20 cent loss. Now we can sell two spreads against this trade and alter our risk. We can sell the September 62, 61 half put spread and collect 10 cents. And we can also sell the September 65 half 66 call spread at 19 cents. Now, if you were listening a few weeks ago, you'll know that this is ultimately an iron condor that we're selling. That means that we would collect a total of 29 cents, 10 cents for the put, 19 cents on the call, the additional call spread. And that means that we in all have collected a total of 51 cents in the month of September. That's 22 cents from the original 62, 62 half call spread. That's 10 cents from the 62, 61 half put spread, and then 19 cents for the 65 half 66 call spread. If stock finishes between 
$62.50 and $65.50, then we are covered. We will have made back our loss and we walk away just happy. I would actually suggest that you write these trades out to understand fully what happens to your total position at every price. You know, I typically will move price around by say 25 or 50 cents just to make sure that I totally know what's going on um, in, in the uh, payoff of this trade. And remember, if this is plan B, make sure there's a plan C for the situation where stock goes above $66 per share. Um, again, we've got three weeks left in the month of September. And if you add to this trade to try to mitigate your losses, that means that you still have a position on and that position can still be affected by market price movement. So biggest hint there is sell more put spreads. It also helps if you understand the effects of ratio spreads. So even though I sold a put put spread for 10 cents, if stock continues to go higher, I could sell more than one put spread or more than one uh, in volume. I could sell two or three uh, to keep trying to offset the cost of, a, of an upside loss. So that's it for the credit spread. Our final trade from last week, of course, is the debit spread. And we looked at Cisco Systems, CSCO. At the time, the stock was trading for $46.61. And we looked at buying that September 47 half, 47 put spread, paying 34 cents for the spread, which leaves us with a maximum possible gain of 16 cents or 47% return in four weeks. Not too bad. Now, shares of Cisco system rose 20 cents this week, ending the week at $46.81 per share. The in the money put spread we purchased is still in the money, and we have not crossed our break even point. So that's a sign that we should stay in this trade. The put spread, which we bought for 34 cents, can be exited for 24 cents. So if you want to, uh, to lock in a loss of $0.10 cents just to close off the risk, you can. But at this point, you would definitely be losing $0.10. Cents. And, of course, part of, that, part of that loss is just due to the crossing of the bid-ask spread to exit the trade. If you were able to exit the trade for a mid-price somewhere in there, you actually would lose significantly less money. Now, you can certainly sell another spread against this trade to cover that $0.10 cent loss. Of course, if you sell a call spread, you're actually adding to the risk to the upside rather than closing it. In other words, if prices went higher, if prices went up, you would lose money on both the long put spread, the put spread you own, and that short call spread. Now, if you sell a put, a, a significant price drop would remove the profits from your long put spread and possibly those would be consumed if the new put spread that you sell also finishes up in the money. So you would be long a put spread that is fully in the money, and you'd be short a put spread that's in the money. And actually, you would end up losing part of that money because the amount of money that you take in for selling that put spread is less the amount of money than that you paid to, to buy the other one. It's sort of like a cost of goods sold. Um, your cost of goods sold on that first put is significantly higher. So even if both puts end up in the money, you're going to lose money because the amount of loss on the short put would be more than the gain on the long put. So I would simply, honestly, I would simply hold tight on the spread, wait for the market to show its hand a little bit more. We don't have to pursue plan B because our break even point hasn't even been breached. So we're still within the spectrum or within our rules uh, for staying in this in this trade. And the spread is still in the money. So if prices were to close, if stock were to close right here today at $46.81, we would still make our full return, that 47% on this uh, on this put spread. So let's hold tight on that. I'm, I'm looking at holding tight and uh, just looking at the new trades for the week. So this week, we saw some gains in the market. Hopefully, uh, we'll keep that going. Of course, we are, uh, we've are we got Labor Day weekend uh, right now. So uh, hopefully, you guys are have plans to enjoy a very nice, very long, and very relaxed three-day weekend. Um, I do expect to see more volatility come to the markets come uh, next week and moving forward, especially as we start to veer into Q4 
we're going to see uh, people wanting to figure out how to make money in this market. So, you know, when you consider the guys that run these mutual funds, like let's say you have money in a, you know, in a Vanguard or a Fidelity uh, fund that's an S&P 500 replication, their goal is not just to match the returns of the S&P 500, but to actually beat it, right? So what ends up happening is if they return, if the Fidelity S&P 500 uh, index returns more uh, than the mutual fund, the similar mutual fund at Vanguard and some of the other um, creators of mutual funds, then they will expect to see an increase in money under management, which means the company makes more money and the traders actually get paid better. So um, that's why you end up seeing these guys actually push a little bit harder in Q4 uh, if they haven't made their full return or a return that they feel like will beat the competition. You'll see a lot more buying and selling in Q4 to try to create that additional return. So Q4 is always a lot of fun. As a professional trader, when I when I traded for other companies specifically, not my own money, I don't do this, but when you traded for other companies, you definitely were looking to either make more money if you hadn't made your your goal if you hadn't made your your uh your threshold or whatever number you wanted to trade for your amount of profit by the by Q4 then you were definitely going to be really active in October and November possibly on into December if however you'd made your money by the end of December or the end of November then a lot of guys will sort of take their feet off the brake um or take their foot off the brake uh, mostly because they don't want to screw it up, right? The professional traders are still always managing risk. So if they made money, made money on the year, and uh, the, it's the end of the year, they, there's not a whole lot of additional upside for them to take the risk um, of of losing money when they've already made their number for the year. So you'll see a little bit more. That's why we see more activity in Q4 most of the time. And in a year when um, when these funds have already done really well, um, you'll see them sort of take their foot off the gas in, in Q4 as well. So just a little something to, to allow you to kind of peek behind the curtain and understand uh, some of the market uh, movement that we might be up for in the coming weeks. So let's look at the trades for this week. We're going to start off with a covered call on Lanet Company, Inc., symbol LCI. Lima, Charlie, India. The stock finished the week at $10.30. And I'm looking at buying that stock and selling the September 11 call at $0.50, cents, which creates a maximum return of 11.65% in three weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying LCI stock for $10.30 and selling the September 11 call at $0.50. Cents. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $11 per share. And the break-even price on this trade is $9.80. Now, our next trade is going to be a credit spread, of course, a spread that we sell. We're looking at the S&P Oil and Gas Exploration and Production ETF, symbol XOP, X-Ray Oscar Papa. Stock ended the week at $21.57. And looking at selling the September 22, 22 half call spread at $0.19. Cents which creates a maximum possible loss of $0.31 cents in three weeks. Now you enter this trade by selling the September 22 call at $0.57 cents and buying concurrently buying the September 22 half call for $0.38. Cents. This is a credit spread because we are selling the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices finish below $22 per share because we're selling the spread. The break-even price on this trade is $22.19. And our final trade for the week is a debit spread. We're looking at Square Inc., symbol SQ, Sierra Quebec. Stock ended the week at $61.84. And I'm looking at buying the September 62 half, 62 put spread for $0.32, cents, which can create a maximum gain of $0.18 cents or 56.25% return in three weeks. And you enter this trade by buying the September 62 half put for $2.50 and concurrently selling the September 62 put at $2.18. This is a debit spread because we are buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices finish below $62 per share. 
the break even price is $62.18. So that's it for these three trades this week. Of course, uh, once again, I'm selling a call spread and buying a put spread, which means that if the market ends up being lower overall this week, there's a good chance that I'll make money on both of these trades. And contrary, if we have another rallying week in the market, it's a good chance that I'm going to lose some money on this trade, on these two trades. But I'm sure you guys like that because we end up with a much better explanation of what I would do next, um, which hopefully gives you guys a clue on how to uh, structure your trade, plan your trade. And, you know, as a side note, um, which shouldn't be a side note, it's actually important. We oftentimes, you know, you'll hear phrases like plan the trade and trade the plan. And that's great. But most people, in fact, I'll ask a question. How many of you actually have a plan for if prices move against you? Right. Normally we have a plan for when we're going to enter the trade and what happens if prices move in our direction. But you also need to have a plan or, or at least a general strategy that you intend, intend to execute if price moves against you. Create a full plan. Create a plan for if markets go up and that helps you and create plans for when markets move against you and it hurts you. So that's it for this week. Hope you guys have a fantastic three day weekend. Be sure and share this podcast with your friends who also trade options especially if they're more prone to lose money than make money i can definitely help them out hopefully uh, <laughs> it's funny to say definitely and then hopefully but anyway have a wonderful weekend happy trading thank you for listening to the weekly option podcast please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com disclaimer there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading the indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.